afternoon. Thank you very much. Uh, my name is Eric Jeske. I'm from Subaru Telescope, like Josh uh, before me in the previous talk. Uh, today I'm actually reporting on a project that I introduced last year at SciPy 2013 called Ginga, and it's uh, essentially an astronomy image viewing toolkit, um, primarily for viewing FITS files. And what you see here on the screen is a kind of a screenshot of uh, what we call the reference viewer that we distribute um, with this. And there's been a lot of interest in that, but I kind of want to expand uh, the discussion to talking more about the toolkit itself and what's available for building into other projects. Uh, so first of all, let me explain what I mean by that. Uh, the main goal of the project when we started off was to uh, build something that we could use to build into different applications in an observation control system for manipulating basically FITS files or astronomical images. So we had guider images coming in, we need to display them, we might need to plot some stuff on it, uh, we want to be able to manipulate those. We have a quick look where images are coming in from instruments, we need to be able to display those, do things. We might want to uh, show images from the Digital Sky Survey and overplot catalog things on them and maybe let people select them. So we had this need for some kind of basic widget that we could reuse in a lot of different places with a lot of different looks and a lot of different um, kinds of GUIs. We want to be able to basically build FITS viewing capability into any app that we wanted. And we wanted to have performance that was kind of like DS9 or SkyCat or something like that because that's what we were trying to replace with Python. And we don't want to reproduce what's done elsewhere with good packages like AstroPy or, or Matplotlib for that matter. Um, we want to complement those. So that was the, the, the origin of the toolkit idea. So when I mention that to people, a lot of people say, well, why don't you just use Matplotlib? You know, there's lots and lots of examples on the web of people using Matplotlib to display FITS images. And the answer is it really depends on your needs. Matplotlib is a very good solution, um, especially if you have primarily just showing static images. So you're preparing a um, um, static view of a FITS file. You might want to plot some stuff on top of it. It's perfect for that. However, its interactive performance is OK. Um, and definitely when it's compared to something like the user experience when you're using, say, DS9 or something like that, for interactive exploration of the image and for adjustments, it's just not quite there. So that's where Ginga comes in. And one thing that we've done since last year is we've actually added Matplotlib as a possible backend for Ginga so it can render into a Matplotlib widget. And in some cases now, that they can be combined to get the best of both worlds. So just to emphasize this, I want to show a couple of examples um, of using it in a sort of a toolkit fashion. One is called Glue. Uh, some people might recognize that from last year. I think Chris Beaumont introduced Glue at SciPy 2013. And uh, Glue is an interesting application uh, that essentially allows you to explore the relationship between um, data sets. I think he's at Harvard now, and this is also done in conjunction with the um, Space Telescope folks. And here's the application. Um, it also, in addition to showing FITS files, can visualize different kinds of plots, can connect to catalog data, and so forth. What I'm going to do is just illustrate the FITS capabilities so when I drag a FITS file into this application, um, it'll ask me what kind of viewer do I want to open it with. And so if, if I pick the default viewer that they've chosen, up pops a Matplotlib viewer. This is kind of a typical thing. And it's OK. Um, when I play with it, I, I won't go too much into this because it's kind of the standard thing that you would expect from a Matplotlib viewer. It's a little bit blocky here, a little bit pixelated. And the user interface is, consists of hitting toggle buttons and then doing functions. Definitely not as smooth as something like DS9. So I thought, well, let's just try and build in, use Ginga as a widget for this. So I've added that, sort of hacked it in. And uh, let's try viewing that same file as with the Ginga viewer. So that pops up this guy. And you can see it looks a little bit different. 
And what you see immediately is that you've got this kind of interactive performance um, for doing zooming, scaling with DS9 contrast adjustments. Um, we've got things like being able to toggle color maps really quickly. Um, you can rotate your images. You can transform your images, swap in X, Y, flip, so forth. You can change the t color distribution algorithm. So you want log, power, square root, A sign, so forth. You can do that. Um, so it, th this just touches on a list of the kinds of things that you can do with this widget, which sort of feels a lot smoother, has very high quality rendering. Um, and I've just patched it in here. I don't know whether this is a, you know, a reasonable marriage for this particular application, but just as an idea to show you what's possible. I uh, want to show you one other quick example. That is something I did after last IPython, uh, SciPy having to do with IPython notebooks because they're so popular right now. Um, I created this little app which you can load into a notebook and basically it allows you to pop open new viewers and you can have a kind of a two-way conversation between your notebook and the viewer and the viewer and the notebook. And I'll show you what I mean by that. So I popped open a new viewer. You can have any number of these viewers. And I'm going to go ahead and load a file into that. And this, this little um, widget here is just like the one I showed you before. It has the exact same char characteristics, so you can adjust all those things that you could on the other one. And it basically allows you kind of a rich space to um, explore your data. But what I wanted to emphasize here was what you get in sort of this two-way interaction. So I'm going to, I need to execute a cell here so that I can do some stuff a little bit later. I wanted to show that I can actually do something like draw on this widget here. I'm just going to draw a point. And then I can ask questions about that. So like where, where did I just draw a point? You know, what is the RA index of that point? Um, and you can even also control all of the aspects, you know, in, in addition to manually GUI, using the GUI to do that, you can use the API to set the color maps, to set the zoom, whatever. And once you finally got something um, interesting, let's say that you want to capture, you can just capture that into your notebook. And so I think this makes a kind of a really lovely little way that you can develop like an interactive data analysis tutorial. So you, you just show your code and you capture screenshots and you can very quickly explore different kinds of um, possibilities. So where's my presentation? Here we are. Uh, so here's a basic rundown of the highlights of the new toolkit features. Um, since last year, we've completely redone the WCS and image file, it's all encapsulated, it's all pluggable. So if you have some grand new scheme for doing WCS in a way that nobody else does it, uh, or you want to store your data in HDF5 or some kind of format, you can do that. Um, all that's required is that it ultimately reside into a NumPy array so that we can display it. Uh, you can completely change around the user interface bindings. That's new since last year. Uh, we've improved the color mapping and the color distribution algorithms. They're basically now the same as uh, DS9. I showed you just I just showed you the interaction with IPython notebooks. Uh, the rendering in the map plot line figures is kind of a neat thing because even though it's a little bit slower than rendering to sort of a one of the more native backends like Qt or GTK. Um, you do have these tremendous overplot opportunities because it's such a great uh, plotting widget, so that's a neat thing. And then uh, a few more things that are a little bit experimental, but I'm going to give you one more demo of that uh, coming up here. We do have a reference viewer. Uh, that's gotten a lot of the attention, which I'm trying to now shift more to the toolkit. But if you're interested, we, we just built this because at Subaru we needed this kind of application. And, and so we made it a general plugin based thing that you can sort of substitute all kinds of plugins to do basically everything that's done in the viewer. Um, we have now have some SAMP and IRAF plugins for interacting with IRAF and SAMP applications. Um, some of the plugins are still kind of rudimentary, but I want to show you one that, that I kind of like. 
Um, oh, let me show you first this one. This is uh, the SunPy people have a Google Summer of Code student uh, named Rajul, and he is working on a SunPy uh, database browser. So they essentially browse their database in the plugin. It populates a table full of objects that have been observed, and you can single click or double click on one, and then it loads it into the main um, reference viewer window so that you can browse that. And let me show you one other plugin that we've written recently. It's still a bit rough and experimental, but we're using this for some of our multi CCD instruments. And this is called Mosaic. And this is basically does image mosaicing. It's not going to give you the same kind of quality that you get with, um, you know, some of the standalone applications, but for something like a quick look or for something like interactive browsing, it's quite good. So I'm going to basically uh, take 10 Supreme Cam images, which comprise a single field, and I'm going to drop it into this to, to illustrate just what happens when these arrive from an instrument. Did those actually get dropped? Maybe not. Let's try again. Okay, let's try that again. Start this guy. Set my field to There we go. Okay, so it starts, uh, according to the WCS, it starts um, rendering those into the image, and there is your complete uh, image of 10 CCDs, images all mosaic together. And we have an example of this with our uh, new instrument, HyperSupreme Cam, which has 112 CCDs. As you can imagine, it takes a little bit longer, but it's um, very interesting. If you'd like to see a demo of that, um, come see me afterwards, and I'll, I'll get, show you a demo. So let's get to the summing up here. Um, last year, this thing was a little bit difficult to install, but thanks to some really excellent help from the AstroPy people and some other contributors um, who sort of uh, influenced me to make this thing a lot easier to install, it's now a basically distutils type install. Uh, and Anaconda and Canopy have come a long way. They basically now have everything you need. So if you've already got Anaconda or Canopy installed, all you need to do is do a pip install Ginga and you've got it. Um, it's a straight Python application. It just needs some libraries like SciPy, AstroPy, PyQt, and Matplotlib. Um, Linux repo, if you're on Linux, has everything you need. You can also do it on the Mac with Homebrew or Mac ports. Uh, the one I'm showing here was done with Homebrew. All of these work equally well, so it's easy to install. Future work, um, toolkit's pretty um, stable at this point. We, I do want to finalize some things with the image overlay support, maybe improve the performance with Matplotlib a little bit. Not sure how m well that can be done. Matplotlib is a little bit slow inherently. Um, and then for the reference viewer, a lot of the plugins are still sort of proof of concept. Some of them are pretty ad advanced, the ones we use at Subaru. Uh, others are just kind of proof of concept. I'd like to make it polish some of those things up that were done in a hurry. Um, and then make it easier for people to contribute plugins and register those so that these can be used um, if people want to use the reference viewer. If you're interested in whether your app could use Ginga or if you're interested in possibly contributing to the project, I'm going to be around for the sprint days. I'd love to talk to you. Um, let's sprint or let's chat. And thank you very much. Here's some URLs. This one in particular, the third one, is the um, URL of the notebook that I showed you earlier. So I'd encourage people to check that out and let me know if you have any questions. Thank you for listening. <laughs>